I think that the reason we think R&B is dead is because our era of music and the styling of that, when we first fell in love with R&B, that is not thriving. I think that R&B has evolved. There are plenty of R&B songs if we think, look at the definition of rhythm and blues. So a lot of the songs you're hearing on the radio are rhythm and blues. They are R&B songs. They're just rappers singing them. So I think the problem is that um, we've lost track of the identity of what R&B is. Somewhere it got mixed up. Whatever happened to the big R&B songs? You know, I'll Make Love to You. Um, another Sad Love Song. Uh, with some other ones. Um, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. I mean, we used to have these huge anthem love songs. And we don't have, we don't see them anymore. I'd like to offer that my explanation for it is I think the lack of songwriting teams, good songwriters, strong songwriters, and, and, and artists that just songwrite. Um, I've noticed a lot of the labels have downsides, so they don't have the artist development anymore. And I think that they're also skimping in other areas. And I think one of those areas is songwriting and that type of development. I notice that a lot more artists nowadays write their own music. And while I, ce I celebrate that, I think that they're limiting themselves a lot of times. Um, there are several artists that I listen to and I enjoy today, but I, I just wonder what would they, you know, if they had a baby face or Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis or someone like a Diane Warren or someone to cultivate uh, you know, those strong, powerful songs of yesteryear, what would they sound like? I mean, there's artists that I like, like Ari Lennox. She has a beautiful voice, but, you know, she writes most of her material. And I just think that, you know, while she is, she can, she can write a song, you know, I think she's shortchanging herself with, without having other input from other writers. Yeah, but it, 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 it's, it's, you know, this goes back to the last conversation about the, uh, the label, you know, I have to, I have to painfully admit that a, a record label is a is a business. It has mm -hmm. investors, shareholders. Its primary job is to return a profit, um, and it does that by selling records, entering all these deals um, with streaming services, social media, net, and the companies um, and broadcasters to make money. And whatever is going to make money for them, they'll push that. When we start to get producers like Timberland and the Neptunes get hired to create a sound that doesn't matter who the artist was, it, they all sound the same. But it was, you know, I could listen to a Pharrell record or Justin Timberlake record and think, well, who, who, who was the difference? Or listen to a radiate track, um, or sometimes Usher and thinking, okay, there was no difference between that. The same way when Timberland was bringing the stuff, um, I think Bobby V mentioned the same that his career tanked when he when he allowed the label to put, bring in Timberland and took away his sound that he cultivated with Tim and Bob. So it, at the end of the day, the the sort of identity of um, of the lyrics disappeared when. They were looking for the beat, and, and it's very much driven by the beat, as opposed to the wordings. As you know, we talked a little bit about Adele. Her new track just has a piano, and she's singing or almost talking or telling a story with someone playing the piano over the background. There's no beats. There's just very simple strip back, and and that's her power where she strips back the music and listen to me, listen to what I'm saying, that becomes the theme of what she's saying and doing. That's why, that's where you're talking about big songs. With R&B, we, we really moved in those 2000s to the producer coming up with the beat and we, we, really, we really got intoxicated by the beat and the production. So it is going to be hard to go back trusting songwriters 
whether you get two or three to come together to come up with a nice song when the time the, the you know the attention span of of the listener is hmm, do i am i gonna dig this beat and and what's going on what's what's the message i think you're underestimating the power of a good song and i think that i also disagree with what you're saying because i feel like you're right record companies are a business and that's why you've had shows like x factor and american idol that we had whenever you see those groups like one direction they have these these songwriting teams that write these powerful hooks and these catchy lyrics and they these aren't these it's done and it is proven to be able it, it's proven to work and and it may have worked in the pop arena but it would also work in r&b and i think that what's happened is that we've done away with the black music divisions and everything else and everything's kind of been merged into one thing and we're we're throwing money at so-called execs that used to just work with hip-hop and expecting them to understand what to do with r&b artists they're running the r&b divisions like their hip-hop labels and r&b needs a little bit more um nuanced care than that it needs more attention in certain areas and that's why we don't have those big artists because we're, i remember when uh fantasia won american idol they no, placed no, her didn't. with all these specific no, I know that's didn't. a different time period. No, she didn't win. Over, I, yeah, she got voted off early. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, didn't win. I'm my bad. Yeah. She didn't win it, but but anyway, she when when she, she was a part of that system, yeah, and they understood the the, yeah. the same thing that Clive Davis understood, Tommy Mottola, the Barry Gordys. The songs are what is going to establish these artists, and I think we've gotten away from the 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 connecting the right songs with the artists because now we've created the culture where we told all the artists you gotta write which you should you should write I think a lot of these artists could be a lot bigger if they opened up um and allowed other people to come in and give them some songs because it, it these songs I'm hearing I'm listening to these albums and halfway through I'm falling asleep because they're all the same thing and it's just like it's a waste but but at the end of the day it, um, Amani has said, oh, we've got 50 million views on YouTube of our new track within the last week. That's where the money is, the visuals. Or, right. you know, and you, you, you're, you're watching the video, then you, you can remember in the song and you're hearing it on Spotify. It, that's how it is. You know, no one's going into the record, Tower Records to buy an album and listen to the songs. So because the view, the, the buying habits are, are, have changed, there isn't the need to focus so much on the, the type of song, the lyrics and, and everything in the in R and B. Because for the for the, the you know R and B as good as it as we all love it, you know when 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 people like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears were selling ten million albums each time they dropped it. Labels were saying, okay, how do we get to that? Then hip hop, Eminem and Snoop all started to, to drop, sell a million in a week. It's like, okay, that's, that's it's all, it's a business. You know, if, if, uh, hey, and R&B artists was doing that too, but the but focus when they went stopped more doing that, to... Which R&B, what's the last R&B artist that dropped a million records in a week when they came out? You know, Boys to Men sold more than Jodeci. They which put artist back period has... Which artist? Period. I would say yeah, Drake. But, but, though, but what, what, I mean, yeah, yeah, no but, artists are really doing that. I think yeah, there's but, another thing that, because I think that there's another thing that's really being not touched on. The record industry is not making the money that they used to make, um, they, and they, they're putting out they, more they, product they, now than ever before, but they're making less money. So, well, then I mean, they're still, been, they're still making money, but they've, they've shifted how they're really. making money because they're not they're not selling albums. If you talk to any real exec, they're going to tell you they're not making the money they were, especially around. I bet a lot of a lot of people did not know how how much money the record industry was losing in the early two thousands. Nobody knew that until they re recently started to come out and say, "Yeah, we were losing a lot of money," and da 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 da. So I think that right now it's an illusion. I I don't believe they're. I mean, right now, this is a sad note. The entertainment industry is threatening to go on strike as far as in Hollywood. I mean, there's so many different things going on that, like I said, are propped up. And you would think, oh, 
you know, Hollywood's back. They just had, you know, a number one movie that made millions at the box office, but they're talking about going on strike. So I think there's some things that are not necessarily public knowledge, but I do believe that right now the all of the dynamics and things we're talking about, even those aren't making the money. So views on on YouTube are the determining factor on the success of an artist and, and is, that's where we've gotten now it's just it's ridiculous but i get what you're saying i totally understand what you're saying but i think that to just say oh they're not going to make money there can be money made if it's cultivated right if, if that per if, if they really if the art if the labels were in more of a making a star and in a um superstar mindset that we they will be able to find that they will be able to find an artist that can make that kind of money i don't believe that they are i think they want the microwave money because you know they don't have the resources to develop these artists and a lot of these artists are not developed i'm listening to their songwriting i'm listening to the styles it's it's not developed we don't when was the last time we had our last i think rihanna probably was our last superstar yeah but still maybe I rihanna or beyonce that yeah, was I almost over a yeah, but as much as it is, there is, as I said, it there 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 are there are business, and if people like Chloe, is it Chloe and or Haley and and um, and those people are, are are generating the incomes that 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 is needed, why why, why would they? But are they? Chloe, I mean, those girls aren't making any money. The Chloe and Haley didn't sell any records. It's all, it's no all, what records. I'm trying to say Nobody's is that buying they're, it's a well, what I mean by buying is listening. No one is really, well, you, I mean, you know, I get what you're trying to say. <laughs> it's all streams. You're it's talking all... about buying records. I'm, I'm talking about, and, 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 okay. So you're saying that you're talking about buying records. I'm not talking about, I guess I'm saying that, but that's not what I mean. Yeah. What I mean is, Chloe and Haley are not making money from their music. They're not generating the real. What's what's being happening is that there, there's a machine behind them creating mm -hmm. illusion to, the, to prop up the artist to be influencers for other things. So yes, you have a music career, but once we get you in the hearts and minds of the people we're using you for these other things that we're going to use you these are not to me artists in the traditional sense of what it was and nobody's saying that but it's 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 how it, you know no one is saying that but if 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 they are bringing in 50 100 million streams and and plays that's pretty much how you know but are that's, they well, I can, mean, I don't can, know. I just on, don't. Yeah, I you question can go onto YouTube. It. You know, you can go onto YouTube, see how many streams a video has had, and see, okay, wow, somebody's a billion streams. That's pretty much where the. That's how they make their money. How what YouTube pays, then Spotify is paying. Jason Derulo has a billion streams on a couple of his videos, but I, I mean, his label still dropped him. I mean, I, I correlate. I mean, but somebody the, make that make sense to me that his his videos. You go on YouTube, most of them are 400, 500 million. Some of them, a couple of them are a billion, but the label dropped him. So something's not but how, but how, how, right how, there. Yeah, how recently are those? Because historic videos are making money now, but it doesn't most mean whether- Most videos he put out are over 100. Yeah. But I'm just, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I mean, but the main thing I'm concerned about is We've gotten so attached to that's. I think my main stance. I think that's why I'm breaking away from the record industry. I believe that people keep talking about when is R&B coming back? When we break away from the corporate hands? When we start doing it ourselves? When we start? Um, I hate the term independent because it it's, it, it sounds um, it sounds like you've been banished off somewhere. What, what, what needs to happen is R&B needs to go underground like it used to be. All of these things are things used to be for us, by us, for our people. We did it for ourselves. When they start saying we start supporting it and starting and starting to gravitate to our own things, that's when they'll start coming back and saying, oh, well, we know we need our version of that. That's always happened over and over and over again. So, yeah, there are things that are, fun, you know, the Namanis and all these people that you're bringing up. I don't know that those classify for me as artists, but they are recording artists. And 
I don't know that Normani is as successful as she's being portrayed as. I don't think she's successful. I think she's near being dropped by her label because the singles she's dropping are not really making the, the it, you know, it's not reaching what they're expecting it to do. And they've put a lot of money behind her. They spent millions of dollars. And I'm just using her as an example. So, yeah, they're spending a lot of money to create these images for these artists that are not sustainable because realistically even though they don't sell records anymore they can't keep putting millions and millions of dollars into your production your 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 wardrobe your image um buying your i do believe those some of those views are bought or promoted and they can't only do that for so long you have to stand on your own and have something that grabs the people or that what they do is they end up moving on to someone else yeah but, but a real true artist just their artistry. This, I, we talk about Bruno Mars. I will say I believe not only is art, uh, Bruno Mars an artist, but he understands what sells and he understands that. That's why it's working for him. But he, I will call him an artist before I call someone like certain people an artist. Yeah, but as I said, the the it's all it's all you you know somebody who's an independent artist means that look, Dalvin is an example. He could do. Put out what he wants, when he wants it, how he wants it, and no one's saying no. We don't like this. No, you need to change this. We need a hook there. We need to bring in this hip hop artist, and then it's pretty much isn't what you 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 started to create because we're putting the money in. This is what we want, and so now, an artist who want to have a control over what they put out are doing it themselves. They don't have the financial backing to promote it like when they were under a label, and a label would only give you the, the leeway to put, um, make the type of music that you feel is good if they feel as if they can, that there's a success there. So Bruno Mars has earned that with his last couple of albums that they're like, okay, we'll let you see what you're going to put out there. We'll still back you. So I know we can keep going on and on, and on, uh, but it, it's, you know, and I think one of the things we probably need to keep showcasing is looking at people who are actually doing and writing and performing the types of songs that you are advocating and seeing, and but may not be getting the publicity just because they happen to do it themselves.